Hello and welcome to the data link layer in the introduction to networks um, course. So in the data link layer, what we're going to do is we're going to talk about the layer two of the OSI model. So what is the responsibility of the data link layer? The data link layer is the one that is responsible for taking the packet, encapsulating it, and placing the packet you know, those packet layer three packets, IPv4 or IPv6, placing that packet onto the frame. On the layer two packet, you're always placing the destination MAC address and the source MAC address on the frame. These, this is, this is the, um, the addresses, the layer three addresses, the IP addresses out there. So the layer two, um, the layer two data link layer is broken up into two sub layers: the link local, uh, the link, the logical link control sub layer, and the media access control sub layer. The LLC is the one that's responsible for taking the packet from the network layer, setting up a frame for it, and he's the one that communicates with the upper layers, and that's all done in software as well, by the way, and it's under the 802.2 protocol, the IEEE 802.2 protocol. Then the sublayer will give this frame that's not labeled, you just put the packet inside, give it the, the media access control layer. The media access control sublayer is responsible for taking the packet, finishing the addressing, you know, finishing the labels that are placed on the frame, and then media access, placing the frame onto the physical layer, the media, so we can be transmitted out and also access wrapping the media access control a sub layer is the one who grabs the frame and then when he puts it all together gives it to the sub layer and it moves up so the data link layer write this down it's broken up into two sub layers the llc and the mac and write the definitions of each the llc and the mac all right um, so remember also when we remember when we talked about that on the last chapter is when we send a frame, an Ethernet frame to the gateway, the gateway, the router takes out the frame, pulls the packet out, and they have to reframe it and send it outside. So uh, the router, what it's really doing is take it, you know, it's able to accept a frame from the LAN, pull the packet out of that frame, frame, throw that frame out and then re-encapsulate this frame to in a frame where it can travel outside the LAN, right? Re-encapsulates it. And here are the some of the organizations that are uh, that set the the protocols for LAN and WAN framing. And we'll cover some of these as we move along during our CCNA uh, courses. So let's look at take a look at sub topologies. Uh, some topologies. There are Two different types of topologies. I know we've discussed them: the physical topology and the logical topology. And this is this is very this is a fundamental. You should always know how all the devices are physically connected to each other, and also how they are not only physically connected, but uh, what are their um, IP addresses? How they are virtually connected? Their IP addresses, their subnet. Even you can go down to you know what. Um, what groups are they in? What departments? What VLANs? What their um, securities there are settings? You know, rights and privileges on each of those groups they have. So that's a logical topology. Um, looking at, you know, in looking at some physical topologies, you they can be either point to point, hop and scope, or a mesh. Those are the three most likely way that you would um, physically connect. Devices either you know in a WAN topology or even in a LAN topology as well. Point to point topology means you're directly connected to each other. Even though you might be going over the internet, you can set up a virtual private network VPN so that it seems that one network is connected to a network as if it was point to point directly connected uh, with a dedicated line. That's what a point to point is. Um, you may say most likely in a LAN topology, you will have either a star topology where they're all connected to a switch or multiple switches and extended topologies. Um, there is, in the old days, we used to connect them. That early ethernet used to be connected in a 10-base 5 and a 10-base 
two network used to be connected in a bus topology, but now they are, or a ring topology with token ring, but these are no longer really in use. This is the most common way of physically connected, connecting to devices together in a LAN. All right. Um, communications. There are two different types of communication, half duplex and full duplex. You should know, write this down. Half duplex means you can communicate both ways, but one time, one, you know, one way at a time. And full duplex means that you can simultaneously transmit and receive at the same time, right? A half duplex uh, ethernet is a half duplex network. You may get a full duplex ethernet mix if you want, uh, but that means you're gonna be using two ports um, on your switch. That means you can transmit and receive at the same time, which can double, double up the bandwidth for you. Um, it's a little bit more expensive, but half duplex is something like a, a walkie talkie where you have to press, you can only transmit, but you can't receive all your sending data and vice versa. And full duplex, that means it's like um, a telephone where you can you know, transmit and receive at the same time. There's another one called simplex communication, which means you can either transmit only or receive only, like a radio, for example, only receives, it cannot transmit. All right, moving on. All right, access method. How do we communicate with each other? There's contention-based and control-based. Contention-based really means you're fighting, you're, you're trying to first, uh, first come, first serve kind of um, trying to access the network. So devices, because you're sharing the, the segment for transmission, um, it, you know, it's either you want to take your turns, but everybody's trying to go first. That's what carrier sense multiple access means. And uh, with wireless, they use carrier sense uh, with collision avoidance. And we'll talk about that in a second. The old controlled access with token passing, we'll discuss that in a minute. So let's talk about the carrier sense multiple access. Please write this down, CSMAD, CD, even though it's no longer being used because it's a legacy protocol, but it's always good to know because switches took care of and we're no longer really uh, are concerned about CSMA slash CD. But the way it worked is when a device in the old days, when we were connected to a hop, when a device wanted to communicate, carrier sense, they carry the data and they sense the segment to see if it's busy. And if the, se if the segment is busy, what they do is they wait. And once the segment is clear, multiple access, multiple access means Everybody will try to jump in because now the segment is clear. But the problem is because everybody jumps in at the same time, multiple access, that's where contention comes into. The word contention comes in. You're trying to get there first. There's a very good chance they're going to be collided. So what they do when they all jump in, they turn on their collision detection. And if they detect that they collided, everybody backs off and they start all over again. All right? Because they're all sharing the same, only one person can transmit at a time. And that took a long time. So what the switch did actually is eliminated this need. Every port you can transmit to a port on the switch and the switch will send you to your destination. You don't have to, you know, you don't have, even though you may be, you know, sensing the segment, it's always going to be clear because the switch is going to make sure you're directly connected with no one else is on your line. All right. Uh, that's what carrier sense with multiple uh, access with collision detection is. Now, and that's for Ethernet. Here's another thing I want you to write when it comes to carrier sense multiple access with collision avoidance. Now, with wireless 802.11 wireless LAN networks, they use pretty much the same thing, but instead of turning their collision detection on, they try to avoid collision. And what they do is they send out a, a request to the, um, to the access points and tell the access point, uh, you know, I'm ready to transmit. Would you let me go? This is like uh, the tower in an airport telling the airplane, you know, it's either you're ready to fly or you got to wait. So for the reason that the access point is the one that knows that if you are clear to transmit or not, right? Otherwise you have to wait. That's to avoid collision. All right. Um, then let's take a look at the data link frame. This is a genetic frame that happens at the data link layer. This is the packet that comes from layer three. And what you do is when you grab the packet from layer three, 
you add a trailer. This is behind the packet. And this is the header. This is what goes on to the media you transmit. Then this is whole thing becomes a frame. This is what we say when we say we encapsulate a packet into a frame. You actually take the packet and you add headers and trailers to it. All right. Uh, and one of the headers and trailers that you are going to add, especially in the header, is the source MAC address and the destination MAC address. That's very important. Right. So when we said this guy sends his source MAC address, this is the destination MAC address on the frame. When the router takes the packet out and he puts it into a new frame and it's ready to go outside, this is in the in the WAN, he puts his MAC address on the new frame and the destination MAC address on the new frame. When the router two wraps the frame, pulls the packet out, puts it into a new frame, to send it out to the final destination. He puts his new MAC address, his MAC address on the frame and the destination MAC address on the frame and sends the frame to him. So the packet actually just changes frames till it reaches the destination. It's traveling in different frames, right? We've discussed that, I think, on the last chapter, if I'm not mistaken. Um, <clears throat> the, the logical topology, you have Ethernet and 802.11, that's for wired LAN. And these three, PPP, HDLC, and Frame Relay, are on the WAN framing. So please write these down. The two, the top two, Ethernet and 802.11, is the LAN frames. And the bottom three is the WAN frame. What's inside these frames? All of them? Packets. All right. That's it for this chapter, believe it or not. Pretty short, so please write down what I um, asked you to write down and submit them in homework. And uh, I'll see you on the next chapter.